he ordered through the head of public service, Felix Koske, that all officers in my office be sent on compulsory leave. Yes, last night, all vehicles assigned to officers who work under me were impounded to cripple the office of the deputy president. I don't understand this level of viciousness to a man who have been your deputy, who helped you to become president, irrespective of whatever he has done. At his lowest moment in life, when he's literally struggling to stay alive, you unleash such viciousness against him. I bear no grudge against anybody, but uh, this had, had not seen that in President William Ruto. The man I'm seeing is the one is not the one that I thought that I knew. I know there was concerted effort that I should not go to Kuala for the celebration. Wilson Airport were told that I should not go through Wilson Airport. All owners of helicopters were told that I should not be allowed to use any of them to go to Kuala. I don't understand. But as I say, I want the people of Kenya to know that as I go home today, I have no security. And uh, it's good that they know. And if anything happens to me, all my family, President William Ruto must be held to account. We've made many mistakes in life. And we keep on learning. I trusted President William Ruto. The people of the region where I come from, the Mount Kenya region, trusted him. In fact, as we were preparing to go to office, nobody else trusted him. Msalia Mudavadi demanded that the Masa in an MOU with him, which they did. Moses Wetangula demanded that they, they must sign an MOU with him, which they did. Um, uh, Amazon King demanded the same. Alfred Mutua, everybody else. I'm the only man who trusted him. Verbally, because we are Christians, we used to go to church together. And as a Christian, I believed a fellow Christian that he would never betray me or my people. For the last one year, it's been very difficult for me. But I'm a very persevering man, very enduring. And um, what happened on Thursday is a culmination of continuous persecution and stress for a year. And when I look at it, probably it is history repeating itself. But President William Ruto wanted to take me the route President Daniel Ramoy took Kenneth Matiba. He pushed Matiba up to getting a stroke and eventually dying. When I look to what the President is doing to me, especially now when I'm in hospital, crippling me, treating me like an animal, I think he wanted to take me the Matiba route. But God is gracious. It didn't happen that way. I hear many of his people are calling here asking whether I'm dead, whether I'll survive, whether I'll recover. They were celebrating. It's the most unfortunate thing that has ever happened in this country. That you can be so vicious to a man who helped you to be president. And the crime of this man, telling you the truth, don't evict people without compensation, Mr. President. Mr. President, don't overtax people. You are killing them, you are killing their businesses. Don't force a housing program on people. If people do not want these houses, don't force them. 
My only problem with the president is just being truthful because nobody else can tell him. The framers of the 2010 constitution wanted a deputy president who is elected. As a Baba who can stand for the people. The charity we are being treated for, two, is get rid of an elected deputy president and appoint a control freak. A fellow you appoint who cannot ask a question, who cannot say anything. And I'm sure if they succeed, he'll be asked to sign an undated resignation letter so that in case he starts asking questions, he can just be told to resign. But the framers of the 2010 constitution were very clear in their mind why they wanted a deputy president who is elected. I'm the only man in the cabinet and in the whole government who can stand up to President William Ruto and tell him, hey brother, this is not right. This Adani thing is not good for the country. There's too much corruption, Mr. President. This how things thing is being forced down on the people of Kenya. And they don't like it. Please don't force it down on them. You know, situations where medical equipment that was being supplied by Kenyans to the Ministry of Health now has been given to one single Asian. I said, Mr. President, this is not right. We are killing our business people. So, as we speak, I say that uh, my lawyers are in court. We have faith in our judiciary. And I requested that according to the rules of natural justice, I be accorded an opportunity to be heard in the Senate. You remember I presented myself to the National Assembly and defended myself. In the Senate,